Okay, guys, so this is our last topic in this chapter, chapter six. Um, the, the first and the second theorems of welfare economics. So we have two theorems. Um, so I'm going to state them first and explain what they mean and then do some exercises, which is important because uh, they are, you know, very good questions, very good exam questions, in my opinion. So the first theorem of welfare economics says all market equilibrium outcomes are proto-efficient. Right? So if you calculate the Walrasian equilibrium outcomes, uh, we, we calculated in the previous video of Walrasian equilibrium price ratio. So with those price ratio, calculate the optimal X and Y for both agents. So those X's and Y's are going to be on the contract curve. All right. So in fact, if this is my Edgeworth bucks and if this is the initial endowment, well, what this theorem says, the price ratio is going to be such that, uh, oops, this way. Oh, by the way, so this is usually what agent A's utility will look like, right? This is agent A, this is agent B. Um, so let me use a blue curve. So the agent B's um, indifference curve is going to be something like this, right? Remember, if there was no trade, we said oh, the equilibrium price is going to, I'm sorry, equilibrium outcomes are going to be, uh, you know, all these points. But here, the Walrasian equilibrium says, oh, the price ratio, the equilibrium outcome is going to be definitely, uh, you know, um, here. So this is going to be the price ratio. Well, well, the, the, I mean, Obviously, the price ratio depends on the endowment itself and the utility functions. I don't know which one, but it's going to be one of those. All right. So once again, so once there is no price, if it is pure exchange economy or the barter exchange, well, infinitely many potential uh, candidates as an outcome of a trade. However, if there is price, well, then the price is going to pin down one and only one allocation. But that allocation is going to be pretty efficient. All right, so I'm going to solve an example to verify this. So this is what first theorem of welfare economics says. The outcome will always be pretty efficient. So the market is good, right? Um, the market outcome is, is pretty efficient. Obviously, they all, um, is there, they all are results of a you know, bunch of assumptions that we have, like the utilities are nice, etc., etc. The initial endowments are positive, etc., etc. All right. Well, the second theorem of welfare economics, it's a bit more involved. It's a bit more complicated. It says the following. If all agents have convex preferences, there's also some other assumptions, but they're minor in a sense. So let's focus on uh, the one particularly very important assumption. So if all agents have convex preferences, like the Cobb Douglas utility function, well, then there's always a set of prices, the PX over PY, the price ratio, such that each proto efficient allocation it can be supported as a market e equilibrium outcome, uh, given that we appropriately assign the endowments. So what does that mean? That means, so we can, uh, in fact, um, calculate, I mean, I'm sorry, we can actually support, for example, another proto optimal allocation, this one, as an equilibrium, but then you have to, for example, make the initial endowments this. So, because this is not an equilibrium given that this is the initial endowment. So, the equilibrium is going to depend on the initial endowment. So, if you want equilibrium to be this one, this proto optimal one, well, you have to. Uh, reshuffle the endowments in such a way that uh, you, you let the market clear and then this is going to be the point where uh, the price ratio is going to be this, all right? And then this is going to be the point where the agents in different curves are tangent to each other and it's going to be Walras in equilibrium. But you have to shuffle the or sort of rearrange the agents initial endowments. Well, uh, why is this theorem is important? Well, its, its implications are pretty nice, actually. So let's suppose the initial endowments are distributed in such a way that the, the outcome, in your opinion, is very unfair. All right. So uh, I don't know. I mean, it, you can think of this. Uh, let's say there's a community in your uh, uh, a population where the community is c clearly poorer, they have less money, less education, and so the outcome, in, well, in the in the market, well, they make less salaries, and you know the childbirth rate 
or the child death rate is lower, higher, uh, you know, the, the, all, all the sort of nice indicators that you want to be equally distributed is, is off, mainly probably because of the initial endowments are off distributed at the first place. And so the equilibrium, the market is not fair. So what then uh, this theorem, the second uh, theorem of welfare economics says, oh, you don't have to give up the idea of market. The market can actually give you a fair outcome. But the thing is, you have to encourage the market for this. How so? You can shift the initial endowments and then let the market clear. I mean, let the agents trade in that market. And then these agents are actually going to end up at a better allocation, another proto-optimal allocation that you hope then to reach. All right. So, uh, but the, how can you reshuffle the initial endowments through taxes, for example? All right. So if you think, um, you know, a certain group in your population is, you know, significantly poorer than the others, um, well, then what you can do, for example, uh, uh, shift the endowments. All right. So you can tax the endowments. And so and you, you take from the rich and give it to the poor and hope that the outcome is going to be uh, pretty efficient. Well, obviously, uh, in, and generally, uh, taxing endowments is, is not so easy. Uh, it's, it's a very bold action. Um, but what, well, you, you can bunch of other things that you can do. For example, a lot of positive discrimination, or let's say, um, you know, everyone can uh, get an education, everyone get a PhD degree, but when you look at a, a, a firm, uh, you observe that very few uh, uh, women is, is in the CEO position, for example. It's like, uh, well, how can you change that? Uh, well, the initial endowments is like the time, the money, um, etc., etc. So, how can you redistribute? So, some of the things that you can't really redistribute. What you may do, for example, it's not really endowments, but you know, real life is more complicated than the simple model. What you can do, for example, do positive discrimination, somewhat. Uh, playing with the initial endowments and let the market clear. I mean, you can't force the firms to hire women maybe, but you can give them incentive to do that. All right. I mean, I don't know if it is a, uh, if it is the best example, arguable, um, but sort of that's, that's what the idea of uh, second uh, theorem of welfare economics. All right. So, Let's go back to the uh, first theorem of welfare economics. So are all equilibria really pretty efficient? So for this, I want to solve a numerical example. All right. So what I will have is the following. So let's suppose the agent A has, um, you know, three good one and two good two. Agent B has uh, one good one and zero good two. And then both agents A and B have the same utility function, uh, one half. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, let's keep it even simpler. Well, the same X times Y. All right. So that's the utility function. So what I would like to do, first of all, I would like to find the well rising equilibrium price ratio and then show that, show that the outcome is Predo efficient, Predo efficient. All right. So how do I do that? Well, if you remember the, the, well, uh, uh, the previous video, well, the first thing is the utility maximization, utility maximization. So it means the margin rate of substitution for agent A has to be equal to minus price ratio. And here the margin utility, uh, margin rate of substitution for agent A is nothing but Y A divided by X A. All right. So therefore, oh, uh, minus, this is margin rate of substitution. So therefore, Px times Xa has to be equal to Py times Ya. And similarly, margin rate of substitution for agent B equals to minus price ratio. Uh, well, the margin rate of substitution for agent B is Yb over Xb. So therefore, Px Xb has to be equal to Py Yb. All right, so the budget constraints, the X, uh, a P X plus Y A P Y for agent A has to be equal to 
uh, his endowment 3 times px plus 2 times py. All right. For agent B, it's going to be xb times px plus yb times py has to be equal to 1 times px plus 0 times py. So it's just therefore uh, 1 times px. All right. Well, what do I know is that uh, xapx uh, equals to yapy. So therefore, 2 xapx, right? Instead of yapoi, I just write PXX, uh, pxxi. So it's going to be 2 xapx equals to 3px plus 2py. So therefore, xa has to be equal to um, 3 um, px divided by 2px plus 2py uh, divided by 2px. So it's it's nothing but 3 over 2 plus um, 1py over px. Okay. And then, well, what about ya? I need to find ya, uh, not to find the price ratio, but to verify that the outcome is Pareto efficient. So what is ya? Uh, well, xa px so xa px which is uh, so use this all right so xa px equals 3 px plus 2 py over 2 and xa px is equal to py right py y a so therefore uh, y a is equal to divide both sides by p y it's going to be uh, 2 p y plus 3 p x divided by 2 p y which is equal to 1 plus 3 over 2 p x over p y all right so this is what x a is this is what y a is all right well now I need to find the uh, agent B's uh, agent for agent B I can't really say, oh, uh, instead of A, just switch it with B. I can't do that because their initial endowments are not the same. All right. So therefore, what I can do is, well, XB, uh, XBPX equal to YBYPY. Uh, so YB, so use the budget constraint for agent B. So whenever I have YBPY, just say PX xb so i'm going to have 2 px xb equals to px hence xb is equal to divide both sides by 2 px 1 over 2 all right so it's not going to even depend on px or py good well um is that correct is that so yes this is so good well um you don't need to calculate for uh yb um you'll see why. Well, then that's it. That's the utility maximization. The second step, the market clearance. Market clearance. It means agent A's and agent B's consumption on good X has to be equal to the supply for good X, which is three plus one, four. So agent B is already uh, demanding one over two, and hence XA plus one half has to be four, which means XA has to be equal to, uh, you know, four minus one half, which is seven over two, 3.5. Well, what I know is that XA is already, the optimal XA is, so XA is equal to three over two plus PY over PX, which must be equal to seven over three, of oh, seven over two, I'm sorry. So what, I, what that means is that send three over two to the other side. You see why I made this as three over two plus, etc. Um, so XA is going to be equal to, oh, I'm sorry. This is what XA is. So what I have is PY over PX is therefore four over two, which is just two. All right. So in equilibrium, therefore, the Walrasian equilibrium price ratio, Px over Py, has to be uh, 1 over 2. All right. All right. So once again, if Py over Px is 2 or Px over Py is 1 half. All right. So the inverse of this. Good. So this is the Walrasian equilibrium price ratio. Well, what is or how much agent A is going to consume? 
uh, therefore, it's 3 over 2 plus Py over Px, uh, which is 2. Py over Px is equal to 2. So therefore, the optimal agent A's consumption is for 7 over 2. Well, what is his optimal consumption on good Y? It's 1 plus 3 over 2 Px over Py. And the Px over Py is 1 over 2. So this is times 1 over 2. So it's a 1 plus 3 over 4. So it means 7 over 4. Okay, so 7 over 2 for good X, 7 over 4 for good Y. So the question is, is this on the contract curve? Is this Pareto efficient? That's the final thing that I'm going to check. So how do I find the Pareto? I mean, how can I verify if something is Pareto efficient or not? Well, simple. Calculate the contract curve. Well, for this question, what is the contract curve? Contract curve. Remember, margin rate of substitution for A has to be equal to margin rate of substitution for B. The margin rate of substitution for A is minus Ya divided by Xa, if you take the marginal derivatives. And the uh, margin rate of substitution for, for substitution for B is minus YB divided by XB. So the minus terms will cancel out. So this is the contract curve. Well, in order to verify this, I obviously need to calculate XA, XB and YB. You can do that. You can calculate YB. Or you can just use the feasibility constraint and write everything as a function of XA and XB. That's up to you. I don't care which way you go. I'm going to use the feasibility constraints. XA plus XB has to be equal to 4 because that's total number of good X. And YA plus YB has to be equal to 2. That means XB is 4 minus XA and then YB is 2 minus YA. So therefore, this guy is equal to 2 minus Ya divided by Xb, 4 minus Xa. So use this equality and do the cross product. It means 4Ya minus Xaya. I hope I am not so uh, you know, fast. 2Xa minus Xaya. So those cancel out. So it means Ya has to be equal to half of Xa. So this is what contract curve is. And as you see, Ya is half of Xa. Hence, um, the equilibrium allocations are proto optimal as stated by the first uh, theorem of welfare economics. All right. So for any initial endowments, as long as your utility functions are nice, you would have exactly the same result. I mean, the Walrasian equilibrium price ratio is going to give you some optimal x, y for agent A and B, and those allocations must be proto efficient. Okay, I hope that was clear.